Greetings and welcome back to Doctor Who Revisited, where I go through every single episode of Doctor Who from 1963 all the way up to 2023 and review them. And uh, now we're on to the Terror of the Zygons, the season opener of Tom Baker's second season as the Doctor, which in many ways is a direct continuation of the previous episode of Avengers of the Cybermen. I think I heard somewhere, read somewhere, that it was supposed to be it, the season finale of the previous season, but for some reason they just moved it to this season. I don't, I'm not 100% sure on the details, but it it's kind of irrelevant. I mean, it's all stuff that happened 50 years ago, so we're talking about it right now. And as an episode, I'd say it's okay. It's an okay season opener. I don't think I can see this as a season finale. Uh, not to say that Revenge of the Cybermen's uh, in, in, in an impressive season finale, to say the least. But either way, both, I'd say, you know, are on the same level. The only major difference is uh, Revenge of the Cybermen features a returning villain. As a matter of fact, a villain hasn't, hasn't been seen since the 60s. Uh, put that in perspective for a second. And uh, this episode introduces a new villain that has gone on to become a much bigger thing in the Doctor Who universe. And I'll say this as an introduction to the Zygons, which, by the way, is David Tennant's favorite alien in Doctor Who, alien, alien, alien monster, much uh, in a way that uh, Tom Baker slash Peter Davison are uh, David Tennant's favorite episode, uh, favorite Doctors. Uh, the He keeps changing it up every once in a while. Sarah Jane, of course, remains his favorite. So, yeah, this episode has a lot of great stuff to like in it. Oh, David Tennant. And uh, not to say that he's wrong or I disagree. It's just, you know, it's an episode. I, I don't really see it in the same vein a a as maybe he does. Uh, again, the introduction of the Zygons is okay. I mean, it follows the same model and principle that we've seen so many different times before of getting hints and glimpses of what the monster is before showing it, uh, not really uh, revealing too much, you know, seeing from uh, the point of view of the eyes of the creature, showing the hands first, showing maybe a close-up of the face before showing the full body thing. Uh, it's commonly referred to, to by a lot of people as the Jaws effect, even though Doctor Who's been doing it for over a decade and a half now, and uh, oh yeah, guess what, this episode does come out the same year as the Jaws uh, was uh, first released in theaters, so put that in perspective as well. But overall, I'm I think I've said this multiple times already. I'm not the biggest fan of that format. I mean, if you're gonna show the monster anyway, might as well reveal it. Don't do it immediately right straight away. Like, uh, I think wait, wait, where are they? Uh, I know in the rescue, they just dropped the creature on you immediately before uh, uh before just showing you, you anything and it got a major jump scare out of me and i really liked that but i think the thing that worked for that creature itself so for the zygons i think it this serial just goes two full episodes without really showing the zygons as they are and i suppose it works because they're shapeshifters and they can look like anyone, and it's kind of a major plot point in the episode itself. But I, I'll repeat it. I'm not the biggest fan of how that was handled and how this format continues to get addressed. Uh, that being said, I really like the design of uh, the Zygons. It's not too striking. It's not too iconic for me personally, even though it did appear in the 50th anniversary special. And one of the greatest Doctor Who episodes, or sorry, one of the greatest Doctor Who moments of all time with the Peter Capaldi era, but I don't know what it is. I mean, it's a great looking Doctor Who monster, just, you know, not really a favorite of mine and not something that I remember very fondly whenever talking about Do uh, the greatest Doctor Who villains of all time. That's just uh, me and my thoughts. I really like the design of... Uh, their spaceship, especially from the inside, because, because I love how it looks so organic and natural. And it's a design that has carried over to the modern series when they appeared in uh, the modern series of Doctor Who, the uh, Stephen Moffat era. 
and and, and I just love the the way that they tweak all, all the the different knobs and the way you have to handle all these uh, different knobs and gears and buttons and switches on this on their organic spaceship. But overall, uh, I think the design of the spaceship is a little bit better than the design of uh, the, uh, the the Zygons themselves. As a creature, it's a really good storytelling method, I would say, to have these alien uh, creatures, alien invaders, for lack of a better word, basically just take over people's bodies and just, you know, rather kidnap people and then just assume their form and walk around as uh, they are. It's, it's a very common thing in science fiction. It's been used uh, a lot. It, it's a great way to, uh, to cause tension and drama, especially when, you, when in situations where uh, you don't know who to trust. And, like, they could be anyone, and uh, it's sometimes it, it leads to these situations of you think th you think this guy, this character is uh, the real one, but then it turns out uh, that they aren't. Not so much the case with this episode. I mean, it's kind of obvious from the start uh, who uh, the Zygons are in the situation. I mean, they're they're, they're being very obvious and on the nose with it. Uh, and you know, all the people that they kidnap and uh, transform into, you know exactly who those people are right off the bat. So it doesn't have those moments of. Uh, Oh, oh wow, this character was a Zygon the whole time. You don't get that in this episode, which is a little bit disappointing. Uh, I understand that it's relative, it's in the 70s, so it's relatively early for that concept. But I think that the concept itself has been done enough uh, by that point to show something different like that. But uh, maybe that's just me and being used to um, uh, the 2020 standards, uh, judging a 1970s show with 2020 standard. So uh, maybe I I'm just being uh, a wrong judge here. Overall, uh, like I said, the, the episode stuff isn't very memorable. I, I like the Doctor's outfit at the beginning of the episode. Uh, it's kind of funny to me that we now, after such a long time, we finally learned that the Brigadier is Scottish of all things, or at least partly Scottish. Uh, so that, okay, that's weird. And never really got brought up, and he treats it like it's, it was supposed to be obvious uh, all along. Whatever. Much as I'm not a big fan of the character, I think Harry has a lot of good moments in this episode. Same thing as John Benton, or uh, sorry, uh, I can't remember the name of his new rank, but Benton. Benton, uh, I think, it has a few good moments in this episode. Definitely Sarah James. You definitely get to see more of her uh, proactive approach to life and her investigative jur journalist working uh, properly and she actually does end up being the one that discovers some of the most important plot points throughout the uh, the serial but overall like i said it's um it's a it, to me it's a pretty generic doctor who alien invaders episode that just happens to feature uh, a, uh some of the new d uh, creature designs that went on to become a fan favorite for some people uh, I like the Scarison. Uh, it's kind of funny to me that they basically they solved the mystery of the Loch Ness monster with this creature, and they kind of made the Scarison look like a Plesiosaurus, which is what the for those of you in the know, that's what the Loch Ness monster would be if it does exist. In fact, I mean that's it's uh, that's what people assume the Loch Ness monster is in any case. But uh, yeah, some. Interesting, interesting, cool moments of seeing the Scarison and, you know, effects being what they are, moments, uh, as I like to call them now. And, uh, yeah, this episode doesn't really have a lot of things for me to talk about. We're kind of entering into a phase of just several Tom Baker episodes that I personally consider to be unremarkable. And uh, this, I suppose, is the first uh, so uh, yeah, I like I like the transformation animation of the uh, Zygons into uh, other people. Uh, I wish you know, I wish you know that they had a new version of it with 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 remade effects or sorry mo more modern effects. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's really it. That's all I can say. Harry doesn't really get much of a moment to have his proper departure, and uh, the Doctor being as per usual being like. 
Uh, this is a time machine. I can get back to uh, where we need to go fi- uh, uh, half an hour f- uh, ago. And uh, obviously goes off. And uh, we'll never, uh, we, we won't be seeing the Brigadier again for a while. I'm pretty sure he doesn't show up in the Android Invasion. I'm pretty sure that it's just Harry and me, Benton. Uh, but yeah, so we're not going to see the Brigadier for a few, a few good years now. So uh, yeah, definitely not looking forward to that. But uh, yeah, I think this episode really... This and uh, the Android Invasion are kind of marking the end of an era. For Doctor Who, the end of the unit era, the the end of you know, the Doctor coming back and forth uh, to the same place on Earth, the same uh, around the same time, with the same bunch of characters being, of course, the unit crew of the Brigadier Benton, Yates, and now of course Harry, and and I'll throw in uh, Joe Grant and uh, Liz Sean there as well, and of course Sarah Jane. Uh, but yeah, so I feel it's kind of lackluster end of an era. Kind of comes out of nowhere. You don't even know. You're not even aware that it's the end of this era until you know several seasons go by without any, any unit presence, anywhere to be seen or found. But such is the way of life. So uh, I thank you all for listening to this review. If you've enjoyed it, let me know and let me know what you think about this episode and why I'm wrong for not liking it as much as some other people do. So uh, that is it for me for now. And uh, I'll uh, catch you guys later. So, goodbye for now. Hi there. Thank you for watching the video. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and tell your friends. I'll see you next time.